Okay, the first form that Boo Clore is going to demonstrate is called the Ging Lai. We always used it in the opening and closing of our training. Bruce Lee developed this, I believe, originally from the Choi Le Fat style, as far as the basic lines, and then he refined it down to the more specific lines that gave it the present fluid type of interaction between the hands and the feet. I don't believe the original ones were as connected and were used for the flowing type of training that Bruce believed in. But this was mainly used as our opening and closing salutation. The instructor did it to the students, students did it to the instructor. So we'll go first through the whole form, it's only seven moves, and then we'll review through the feet, the hands, so that you can identify the various elements to practice so that you can do the whole form yourself. All right, first we'll do the complete uh, Ging Lai. Very good. Now we will go to the feet or the legs. Now the important thing to remember in the legs is that the balance is always on the back. In other words, when the forward foot comes forward, there is no weight on it. And then the, uh, that'll be the right foot. Then the left foot comes forward, there'll be no weight on the forward foot. So as you're doing this here, recognize that the balance main is maintained on the back side. Okay, go ahead through the first step. Second step. Now, there's, as you, this, notice how he's dropped down but there's no weight on the lead foot. There should be light and airy. Okay, number three. Now, number three is referred to as Ding Bo, where the toe is right directly beneath the knee. There is no weight on the toe. It's just hanging down. So you're sort of sitting back on the right heel. And this is a very springy position, but yet you don't move, you just stay in this bent position with no weight on the toe, but your toe is hanging beneath the knee. All right. Then in the whole form, there's normally hand and feet movement, but number four is hand only, which we'll get into. Then we go to five, which is a stepping back, the original position, six, which is a stepping back, seven, which is to straighten up. Okay, have them go through it once again. Just follow along. So now people say, should I go with my right or my left first? Generally, if you're right-handed, you will go with the right. We've, it's become acceptable to do it on the left side if you're left-handed and you favor your left side. But for sake of demonstration purposes, we'll do it only on the right side. Okay, ready? One. Now notice Boo has gone straight up into an attention position. His knees are straight and he's getting ready to drop down as soon as he makes this next move. Okay, number two, drops down, breaks at the knee, sort of a springy, but no weight on the, the lead foot. So it's, you're not really um, reaching too far forward with the lead foot so that your weight tends to uh, be forward. Your weight is primarily on the back heel, so it's actually a very short step. Three, ding bow, no weight on the toe, Body is still down a little bit from the bend knee because once you go down, whatever distance you go down, you'll maintain that distance. Okay, four is open hand, five stepping back, six stepping back, seven is straightening up. Very good. Okay, now what we'll do is we'll go to the uh, arms only so that we can show the uh, hands and the arm positions themselves and then we'll go back into the blending of the feet and the hands together. Again, we're going through a count just to show you where the move is. The first move will be up into the floating rib area, which is number one. In other words, you will come up in the uh, tension position and the hands, if you'll notice, are in Boo's floating rib area. Your elbows are pulled back. You'll notice how they're pull, pulled back towards one another to create a little stretch in the shoulders. Your hands are in a closed fist position. They're turned to the side so we can see where your hands are. Okay, now what we're going to do here, turn back towards me. We're going to show you how you establish exactly where your hands go in the general floating rib area. 
So you will bring your hand forward where your left is covering the fist. Notice how the left hand fingers are vertical and the hand is in the fist, uh, is in the palm itself. Not up on the fingers, but in the palm. This is going to be where you are going to reach around with your left as far as you can and cover your fist with your fingers vertical. Now only go back as far as you can maintain this. If you start going back further and your hand drops, you're going too far. All right. Now this will be recognized as your Ging Lai area. This is your particular position and your uh, left hand will also be in that area when you first start out. So you'll notice how it's even across in the same position, elbows back. Now this is where you are actually starting. You, when you're standing up, you start in this position as you see as we go through the whole thing. Also, you'll notice that Boo is square to you, square to the camera. When you're going through the form, you must maintain this squareness. Now, you'll find that the shoulder, like his left will move, the shoulder will round, but the right will stay very square to the camera. This is very important because in our system, center line for double weapon control is very, very important. So we can use both hands as a single weapon if we wish. All right, you'll notice as he came around, he's covering the fist as far as he can reach. This causes a nice stretch. Now, as he comes forward, he's going to keep the fist in the hand it's going to corkscrew in the in the palm itself so that if you'll notice that the hands are about center of the body and the uh, knuckles of the right hand are in the middle of the palm in alignment with the middle finger okay also the height of the hands are just where you can look over the top of your fingers with your eyes so the tips of your fingers are at eye level Elbows are up. Notice how they're up about shoulder level and notice how far they're out. The reason being is because the next uh, couple moves are going to require you to make a circular action that if your elbows are too close, it's going to make you push your elbows out. And what we're looking for is to maintain minimum elbow action during the course of this rotation. This is so this is number three position. Number four is where you open the hands where the hands are parallel and fingers pointing slightly up, again at eye level. Notice the elbows did not move. Now, that was number four. This is the only movement during the Ging Lai in which the hands move by themselves without footwork. Number five is going to be a very big circle, trying to maintain your elbow position as much as possible. They'll float a little bit, don't worry about it. But notice he keeps his fingers together as he does this, and he brings them around back to the original height of the fingers about eye level. So that's number five. Number six, both hands are going to come back, drawing into a fist into the Ging Lai position, elbows back together. And then seven is you push to the ground. That's when you're straightening up. Okay, let's do it once more. Hands by your side. One. So elbows back. Make sure your, your hands are in the ready position to reach around. Two. When you reach around, notice again, keeping the center line, keeping the fingers as vertical as you can so you'll feel a definite stretch in your left shoulder. Three. Corkscrewing out. Keep, that means that your fist is touching your palm at all times as it comes forward into this present position. Fingers are at eye level. Elbows are up and out. So you're going to make the big circle with a minimum amount of motion. Okay. Four. Hands side by side. Elbows didn't move. Five. Big circle. Six. Coming back into the original Ging Lai position. Seven. Pushing down. Very good. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to shoot the whole thing as one single action. Now I'm going to give a count and there's going to be two actions as one. So number one will be where he goes up into attention and his feet come together. Now what you're looking for is every move. When the feet move, the hands move. When the feet stop, the hands stop. In other words, they are very definitely joined together in their action. There is not where one is moving and the other is stopped. You always try and bring these two together as a single action. So open it up again. One. Now, two, you'll step forward and bring the arm around at the same time. So as your foot lands and you stop, your hands has gone around again and covered the palm with your fingers pointing up. 
Three is stepping forward and bringing your hands forward in the corkscrew, toe touching, no weight. Four now, notice the hands will open by themselves. There is no footwork. Five is the big circle stepping back. As your foot stops, your hand stops. Six, hands are pulling back. The other, notice you're back in your original position as far as the feet together, ging lie position. Seven as you push down. And, and that's about it. I mean, just review through this uh, DVD and uh, take each element and practice it. And very quickly, you'll see that you're capable of doing the ging lie with no problem at all. And Bruce really liked this short form because it really gave him an opportunity to watch new students to see how fast they could learn. And this helped him determine whether he wanted to waste time working with them or not. Because if they couldn't le learn the ging lie real quick, he didn't bother to teach them. He just didn't have the patience. But also, it is a very distinct way of starting and ending your training as a direct salutation to student, instructor, instructor, student. Okay, thank you very much.